local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. Ooh-wee! Thursday already? Where's this week going? Yeah, one of uh, one of our favorite days of the week, the next door neighbor to Friday. My goodness, is it gorgeous out there today. <laughs> and uh, it got very warm yesterday. As you said, we thought we had a you know predicted temperature. It got a little bit warmer even than uh, they thought it might get. Yeah. And uh, heading into today, it's looking just <laughs> as fine, fine, fine. Very, very warm out there. Very summery. And, uh, of course, Wendy Sheridan will have the complete forecast for us. Uh, coming up in the news, so looking forward to that. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Look, anytime I can sleep with the windows open at night and you're getting a nice cool breeze oh, coming yeah. in, that's a good, good night. Absolutely. Obviously, you have most of the year when it's either too cold or too hot to do that. Uh, so on these days when we actually have that, where we can have that window open, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like the old idea of, Driving in your truck with the window down and your left hand out the window. You know, it's not something I've done, but I see people do it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it is that it's that opportunity for us to do that once in a while, too, with that mm-hmm. window down and that cool breeze coming in. And I love Could it. not have been more comfortable. How about you? Oh, yeah, same deal. Uh, windows open and uh, just a very comfortable, good sleeping weather. Yeah, very mm-hmm. good sleeping weather. And a uh, good time right now to check in with Wendy, find out what's happening uh, from the news and, of course, in the weather. So good morning, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning in the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. Violence in the Glass City overnight. Four people shot in two incidents in central Toledo. Police responded to Smith Park on Door Street near the Mott Branch Library about 10 o'clock last night, where one person was found shot. Not too far away from that scene at Woodland and Ewing, three more people were found with gunshot wounds. Police are trying to determine if the incidents are connected. Anglers are taking advantage of the nice weather and heading to the Maumee River. Experts say these are perfect conditions to make this one of the best walleye runs in the past few years. The run usually peaks during the first week of April, but this week people are still reeling in their six-catch limit easily. Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur is announcing a $200,000 grant for trees in Toledo. The city will work with Metro Parks Toledo to plant 15,000 trees in area parks. The grant is funded by the U.S. Forest Service through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. The White House Inn in White House, Ohio, is fully reopening Monday. A fire last month forced the restaurant to close. For the past few weeks, the patio was open for business with a small menu and asking customers for donations for repairs. After community support and a lot of hard work, the inn got the all clear to reopen for regular business come Monday. Senator Dianne Feinstein says her return to work after a bout with shingles has been delayed. She's asked Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to temporarily replace her on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Her absence has stopped the committee from confirming judges and led to calls for her resignation. Former President Donald Trump scheduled for a deposition in New York today. It's connected to a civil lawsuit brought by the New York Attorney General. Trump, his children, and his company were sued for $250 million last year for alleged fraud. The race for president has a new potential contender. South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott announced he's forming an exploratory committee to consider a possible presidential bid. Fort Lauderdale and parts of South Florida dealing with severe flooding after the area got about 20 inches of rain yesterday. The National Weather Service called it a life-threatening situation. From the WTOL 11 Weather Center, near record-setting temperatures today, highs into the 80s with sunny skies. Continued warm tomorrow, somewhat cooler near the lake and bay. A chance of a pop-up shower on Saturday, warm and muggy conditions Cooler on Sunday with highs in the mid-70s for the weekend. In the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio, I'm Wendy Sheridan. Gee, thanks, Wendy. Appreciate that. What a beautiful day in the neighborhood. In fact, uh, we're already uh, up to, uh, what, 60 degrees. So it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. Absolutely. And uh, we've got a big hour coming up, the 8 o'clock hour. 
Stay with us. Lots to talk about, lots to cover as we continue in the octave of Easter. And uh, we've got some wonderful guests as we do each and every Thursday as well. We'll get into the mind of one Matthew Archibald. We'll also take a deep dive with Andrew Reinhardt on our word of the day. In between, we'll have a little, uh, I bet you didn't know that. I know I didn't. Heroes of the Faith, my own thoughts on the word of the day. And Wendy's coming back around. Mm -hmm. She's going to go get some coffee, maybe a donut, and then she'll join us in a little bit once again. Probably carrots. I don't know. Carrots. Yeah, she's helpful. And, of course, some unscheduled fun and frivolity along the way. We'll be right back. Morning Offering continues with Ron and Dave here on Annunciation Radio. Hi, this is Father Eric Mueller from Epiphany of Lord Parish in Toledo. Thank you for listening to Annunciation Radio, Catholic radio in the Diocese of Toledo, faith with frequency. Have you ever wondered how to better understand the Scriptures? What does the Bible say to us in our day-to-day life? This is Peter Sibelio, the Bible teacher at Lourdes University, and I'm happy to answer your Bible questions here on Annunciation Radio. Listen for Bible Basics, a daily feature to help you understand Scripture and how to apply it to daily life. Email your questions to me at feedback at annunciationradio.com and listen for my answers to your inquiries. Annunciation Radio would like to thank and acknowledge the law firm of Klein, Cook, and Weisenberger, located on Route 20 in Perrysburg, for underwriting a portion of our programming today. The firm specializes in estate planning, with a focus on simplifying estate plans to keep costs down and avoid probate when possible. You may reach Matt Weisenberger at 419-321-6444, online at ccw-law.com. Thank you for supporting Annunciation Radio. It's time for Annunciation Radio's 2023 Spring Campaign. Our theme is Say Yes. We're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the birth of Mother Angelica and giving thanks that she said yes. We're having a big dinner and a birthday party on Thursday, April the 27th at the Pinnacle in Maumee. Our special guest speakers are Bishop Thomas, as well as Father Joseph Wolf and Jack Williams from EWTN. To register, visit us at AnnunciationRadio.com or call 419-868-2966. If you recently received our newsletter, you also got a copy of my new book, Faith Over Fear, Lessons from My Life with Mother Angelica, which highlights my own personal experiences with her and how those interactions set the course for my life. I can't wait to celebrate Mother Angelica's extraordinary life with you. Again, for more information or to register, visit us at AnnunciationRadio.com or call 419-868-2966. Catholic Radio for the Diocese of Toledo. This is Annunciation Radio. WNOC Bowling Green Toledo. WHRQ Sandusky. WRRO Eden Bryant. WFOT Lexington Mansfield. And WSHB Willard. Local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. And good morning. It's Thursday morning's version of Morning Offering with Ron and Dave. You know, I want to I want to pull back the veil. I want to open the curtains for just a minute. Let you have a peek inside. What you hear are the voices of Ron and Dave. And so you think, well, Ron and Dave are in the studio. But you would mm-hmm. never imagine the number of other people it takes to pull this morning show off. You know, the two of us on the air, of course, but then you've got to have this massive group who's behind you That's right. uh, making all of the rest happen. And so think about that. How many people would that take? Well, in our case, it takes one. So there's two of us on the air, and then we've got <laughs> producer Nick as well, and it's the three of us making this thing happen. That's right. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Ron Oh, you got to turn your mic up. Oh, yeah. now. Hey, there? did you turn the mic on? It's on? Yep. Okay. You should be there. but uh, Oh, here you are. You're on this one. Try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? Nope. Of course not. But good morning, Nick. How are good you? Good morning, Nick. Just speak loudly. <laughs> <laughs> we got producer Nick in the pr- in the uh, production area for uh, our yeah. offices He's here. He's in, in his producer's room. chair there. Yeah, that's right. And which is the only upholstered chair in the entire building. Well, we, we treat our producers that's right. well. That's right. <laughs> 
Good morning, and oh thank you goodness. for being with us this morning. Lot to ha- a lot coming up again. Uh, going to dive into the ma- the mind of one Matthew Archibald. Deep dive with Andrew Reinhardt. We love our Thursdays around here. Yeah, we do. We, uh, you know, there's so much happening on Thursday, and uh, man, we can't wait to get to all of it. There's a lot of stuff in the news too. I don't. I hope we get time to do all this. Yeah, we may have to uh, speak really fast this morning. Okay, let's try that. I'm not sure how. I probably won't be real good at that. Okay, yeah, I don't know. How either. is that? Is I'm, that, I'm yeah. more of a meanderer myself. I don't yeah. know. So. You got a couple of things to cover there that well, I, I found I, of interest. Yeah, first of all, um, I don't know. If you're driving around Los Angeles and you're, you're in the Brentwood area, it's a yeah. very fancy I'm, I often area. am, yeah. Yeah, you know, you kind of roll through in your Rolls Royce. But anyway, uh, occasionally, you know, potholes happen everywhere. Yeah. And uh, uh, we see I live around time. quite a few. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So in this Brentwood neighborhood, uh, there's a lot of famous people that live there, you know, and uh, they were filling these potholes. And as you roll by slowly, you look and see who it is that's doing the work there. (laughs) Well, it's former California governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. (laughs) He he actually, uh, he did the whole mix thing with the the cement and everything, and uh, and he and and a friend and a team uh, just was taking care of the pothole. Well, and this is my, this is my one. I want to say, and, and, and he may be listening. Uh, Mr. Governor, Mr. Former Governor, congratulations. Thank you for your participation. Uh, my street could use a little help. I'm just saying, yeah, that's right. you know, it doesn't all have to happen out there in California. Come to Toledo, uh, mm-hmm. bring your team with you. Yeah. Uh, we'll give you some Tony Paco's hot dogs yeah. and a little, a uh, little tea to drink. And uh, and we would certainly appreciate your presence. In Start fact, on my street. Absolutely. And you could use uh, that packaged concrete that you used in Brentwood to repair the road. Or you could use uh, Tony Paco's uh, hot dog sauce. Yeah, right. We, in my, on my street, uh, so they have cement uh, streets because I need asphalt. Mm. You know, I think I, I'm pretty sure. Hey, whatever he wants to yeah, bring, yeah, <laughs> bring cement. I don't care what you bring. Come and <laughs> fill up those holes that I nearly. If I if I weren't if I'm not careful in the morning, I literally could lose myself in one of those potholes. It appears. Yeah, you got to do that uh, that whole yeah, whoosh, whoosh, swooping left and right to get around those things. Hey, so that's what's happening on this day in, in history. Today is the day. Yeah, that's what the big thing happening today. Look, we've not talked about this, but we've we've had it on our plate for a couple of days. This uh, new FBI finding out that the uh, Richmond Federal Bureau of Investigation used at least one undercover agent to obtain information about traditionalist Catholics. Just Uh, Representative Jim Jordan from here uh, chairs the House Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. Thank God he uncovered this. They literally had put assets in place to go into uh, into Catholic churches, uh, Latin uh, where Latin mass communities in particular. Uh, because yeah. they they said that there was an association with them and white supremacists. I know. Like, come on, guys. I, I I know folks in these communities. They're not white supremacists, uh, and uh, that's just ridiculous. And that we're using federal dollars yeah. and sending assets into these communities. Here's the title. The the, the thing is tough. Interest of racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists and radical traditionalists. Catholic ideology almost certainly presents new mitigation opportunities. Yeah, that's the title of this oh memo that was that was leaked, really, or, yeah. or kind of uh, because of a Freedom of Information Act, they, they were able to acquire this. But it was issued by the FBI's Richmond Division, Yeah, and the memo singles out Catholics who are interested in the traditional Latin Mass as potentially linked to violent extremist groups. Isn't that crazy? Targeting specific Catholics in, in, uh, in parishes, too. Hey, and the Society of St. Pius X. Yeah, and what I just say is, stop it. Stop it. Oh, my goodness. There are clear uh, clear and present dangers all over us, uh, all around us. And you decide um, that you want to go to a Latin mass. Let me ask you this. How many people from a Latin mass community have gone in and, and shot up schools? How many of them have gone into the malls and shot people? I mean, this is, it's so ridiculous. It's so incredulous that it's, bar- I mean, it's hard to even cover it and think that, this is this was a serious attempt to un, to uncover violent people. <laughs> what and where did you get your empirical evidence that would even make you think that this is the place that you should visit? This is targeting, plain and simple, and uh, we 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 obviously see two systems of justice in place. Oh yeah, uh, one that applies to these these pesky Catholics, right? Yeah, and uh, and one that applies to others. And I mean, you see this almost at every turn. We see where um, you know the judge is, is not recommending any jail time. 
for someone who went in and oh. smashed the uh, the statue of the Virgin yeah. Virgin Mary and shouted obscenities and and uh, caused some serious damage yeah. in a Catholic church. Uh, we can't give him jail time. Yeah, but boy, oh boy. If you're Mark Hauk uh, yeah. and and uh, you know you defend yourself against a, a an abortion activist yeah. that uh, comes in your face and and starts to attack you and you push back, yeah, let's give him a life sentence. Oh yeah, and not only that, let's show up at his house with yeah. uh, guns drawn and then find out that the man that he was uh, you know accused of attacking had been fired by the abortion clinic for being too violent. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what does that take uh, to get uh, uh, to get Fired by an abortion clinic for being too violent. It's hey. so disheartening. And but but I'll tell you what, if if we're not targeted, I mean, let's at least be uh, uh, worthy Catholics, worthy of being targeted. You know what I'm saying? If we're under attack, we must be doing something right. Amen to that. And this this is uh, from Catholic News Agency. Uh, Pope Francis called an exorcist as Archbishop. Uh, says devil tries to attack everyone. So when he was the Archbishop in uh, in Argentina. He said that on occasion he would call in an, an exorcist for individuals that had come to him that he thought could use that. And he said several of them turned out to be uh, in need of actual exorcisms hmm. and just reminded us again that the devil is on the attack. And he says, look, he's also attacking leaders of the church. Duh. Why wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. You know that anybody who's trying to do the work of God, whether they're in leadership in the Catholic church, whether it's a husband and a wife at home trying to raise their family properly whether it's someone out there fighting the good fight in the community or someone who's just trying to turn their life in the right direction, of course the evil one who is our enemy, our only enemy, uh, and all of those others who fall prey to him are just victims of his, but he is our enemy, and of course he is after us. And so the Mm -hmm. Pope is saying, as he said many times before, the devil is real and he's on the prowl. Be careful, you know? And and, and what, what? how do you dissuade him? Pray. That's right. He said, just pray. I if love what praying, he said. Yeah. We are human beings, and he is always trying to attack us. Yeah. It is painful, but in the face of prayer, he has no chance. He has no chance. I, I love, love it. That. Yeah. And then he says, yes, it is true, as St. Paul the Sixth said, that the devil can also enter the temple of God to sow discord and turn one against the other. Divisions and attacks are always the work of the devil. He always tries to insinuate himself to corrupt the heart and mind of man. The only salvation is to follow the path indicated by Christ. The only salvation is to follow the path indicated by Christ. So, again, just another reminder from Pope Francis as he gives an interview uh, for a book that's actually published today, Mm. Exorcist Against Satan, uh, published today in Italian. Uh, So, in any case, uh, it's a good reminder for all of us and uh, good to hear that from our Holy Father, just as a reminder to us to... Remain in prayer. That's the safest place to be following Christ. Ain't that the truth? Hmm. All right. I'll tell you what. He's talking about the power of prayer protecting us from the attacks of the evil one. And uh, we need to keep our prayer up. Uh, Let us pray this morning with one of our listeners, our morning offering prayer. Oh, Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary... I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of thy sacred heart, the salvation of souls, reparation for sins, and the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for the intentions of our bishops, and in particular for those recommended by our Holy Father this month. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Brown. We invite you now to join Annunciation Radio and Parents of Priests and Sarah Club Toledo Chapter as we pray for our clergy and religious. We pray for vocations and for an increase of faith so as to become a more holy diocese of Toledo. Today we pray for Reverend Michael Deemer. Dear Lord, we pray that the Blessed Mother wrap her mantle around your priest to follow her own words, do whatever he tells you. May your priest have the heart of St. Joseph, Mary's most chaste spouse. May the Blessed Mother's own pierced heart inspire them to embrace all who suffer at the foot of the cross. May your priest be wholly filled with the fire of your love, seeking nothing but your greater glory and the salvation of souls. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Thank you for praying with us this morning and every morning. I don't know if you noticed, Dave, it's a little warm in the studio yet. We had, uh, on Faith with Reasons uh, yesterday, we had uh, Evangelist Richard Lane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he heated the place up. Now, we opened the windows, but it's still warm in here. <laughs> he brings a little heat with him. Thank Absolutely. goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> And our word for today on this Thursday in the octave of Easter, Thursday, April the 13th, our word for today is touch. Touch is our word for today. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people. You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this, and why do you look so intently at us, as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses." And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name is long, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment, and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm number 8, O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the sea. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Holy Gospel from Luke chapter 24. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. 
And our word for today is touch. Touch is our word for today. We begin, as is our custom, with our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel reading. These he shared at Regina Chaley on April the 18th of 2021. There is a detail here in this description. The gospel says that the apostles still disbelieved for joy. The joy they felt was such that they could not believe that this was true. And a second detail, they were bewildered, astonished, astonished because the encounter with God always leads you to astonishment. It goes beyond enthusiasm, beyond joy. It is another experience. And they were joyful, but a joy that made them think, no, this cannot be true. It is the astonishment of God's presence. Do not forget this frame of mind, which is so beautiful. Brothers and sisters, this gospel passage tells us that Jesus is not a ghost, but a living person. That when Jesus draws near to us, he fills us with joy to the point of disbelief. And he leaves us bewildered in that astonishment that only God's presence gives because Jesus is a living person. Being Christian is not, first of all, a doctrine or a moral idea. It is a living relationship with him, with the risen Lord. We look at him, we touch him, we are nourished by him and transformed by his love. We look at, touch, and nourish others as brothers and sisters. May the Virgin Mary help us to live this experience of grace. I want to repeat that last part. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Being Christian is not of all a doctrine, is not, first of all, a doctrine or a moral idea. It is a living relationship with him, with the risen Lord. We look at him, we touch him, we are nourished by him, and we are transformed by his love. We look and touch and nourish others as brothers and sisters. Mary, the Virgin, uh, may the Virgin Mary help us to live this experience of grace. Touch our word for today. And I really want to just kind of get into that point of it. You know, Jesus is real to us. That experience of Jesus is real to us. His touch is real to us because he is not a ghost. He presents himself to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, and he makes himself available to us, standing at the door of our hearts, knocking on that door, waiting for us to open and enter. For those of us who are baptized in water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we have the Spirit dwelling within us who is continually inviting us to open that door to Christ that he may touch us. I know in my own experience, in my own life, I went made a 180 degree turn when I met the Lord and he touched me. And no one could have predicted it the day before or even five minutes before that experience happened. My life was so contradictory to everything that I learned that day and began to learn that day and continue to learn. And sh my life shifted, not because someone shared a, a, a truth with me or because a doctrine was explained to me or a dogma was explained to me, but because Jesus touched me. <laughs> and when Jesus touched me, then I wanted the rest. I longed for the rest. I was hungry for the rest. But sometimes we want to lead with things and we forget that what's necessary first is that touch, that experience of Jesus. Now, some find it in the explanation of the things that we're telling them, but we need to understand just as it was with the apostles until their eyes were opened, until their hearts were opened to receive him as he opened the scriptures for them, then there wasn't a great benefit to having all that knowledge until there was an understanding. And in that way, we are touched. The end of the gospel reading today, speaking of Jesus, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them. So this is the main point, right? He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And then as their minds were opened, he said, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, repentance and forgiveness of sins. That is the gospel that we preach. That is the touch that is available to us. And when our minds are open because we've allowed the Lord to enter in through his touch, we are made free. Touch our word for today. I love these readings.
Hmm. Um, yeah, I really do. And you know, you really can't fault these disciples for their unbelief necessarily, because oh, yeah. these are really confusing times for them. I think, and they have to recall the words that Jesus told them before. Yeah, not only recollection, but the stirring of the spirit to explain mm, it to yeah. them. And that's where we fall into trouble ourselves. We expect an unbeliever to have the same understanding we have. No, no, no. You don't have the understanding until the spirit is stirred within you mm. and gives you that mind to understand. Why? Because it is the spirit who reveals all these truths to us. Mm. So the way that we encounter someone needs to be based on this idea that they may not have the foundational understanding. And secondly, they may not have the spirit living within them that is only available to the baptized and those who have confessed the name of Jesus and are willing to walk in that relationship. So first we've got to go through that encounter that that touch might happen. Mm -hmm. And then after the touch, everything else can be understood. And what does he do right after the, the resurrection? Um, he touches us by opening up scripture for us. Amen to that. Wow. Amen to that. Pretty cool. Uh, and then everything you. changes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It better. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And Andrew Reinhardt will offer his thoughts on Touch, our word of the day today, a deep dive coming up in about half an hour from right now. Just a couple of minutes. In fact, uh, after Wendy's news, we're going to find out what's in the news uh, in, in the mind of Matthew Archibald. Ooh, check out creativeminorityreport.com to get ready. But wait until after the news. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning in the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. Violence in the Glass City overnight. Four people shot in two incidents in central Toledo. Police responded to Smith Park on Door Street near the Mott Branch Library about 10 o'clock last night, where one person was found shot. Not too far away from that scene at Woodland and Ewing, three more people were found with gunshot wounds. Police are trying to determine if the incidents are connected. Anglers are taking advantage of the nice weather and heading to the Maumee River. Experts say these are perfect conditions to make this one of the best walleye runs in the past few years. The run usually peaks during the first week of April, but this week people are still reeling in their six-catch limit easily. Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur is announcing a $200,000 grant for trees in Toledo. The city will work with Metro Parks Toledo to plant 15,000 trees in area parks. The grant is funded by the U.S. Forest Service through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. The White House Inn in White House, Ohio, is fully reopening Monday. A fire last month forced the restaurant to close. For the past few weeks, the patio was open for business with a small menu and asking customers for donations for repairs. After community support and a lot of hard work, the inn got the all clear to reopen for regular business come Monday. Senator Dianne Feinstein says her return to work after a bout with shingles has been delayed. She's asked Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to temporarily replace her on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Her absence has stopped the committee from confirming judges and led to calls for her resignation. Former President Donald Trump scheduled for a deposition in New York today. It's connected to a civil lawsuit brought by the New York Attorney General. Trump, his children, and his company were sued for $250 million last year for alleged fraud. The race for president has a new potential contender. South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott announced he's forming an exploratory committee to consider a possible presidential bid. Fort Lauderdale and parts of South Florida dealing with severe flooding after the area got about 20 inches of rain yesterday. The National Weather Service called it a life-threatening situation. From the WTOL 11 Weather Center, near record-setting temperatures today, highs into the 80s with sunny skies. Continued warm tomorrow, somewhat cooler near the lake and bay. A chance of a pop-up shower on Saturday, warm and muggy conditions Cooler on Sunday with highs in the mid-70s for the weekend. In the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio, I'm Wendy Sheridan. Thank you so much, Wendy. Appreciate that. We're at, uh, what, 62 degrees right now. Let's check in with uh, with Nick. Nick, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? Okay, good. Nick's we still, doing well. We still can't hear you, but that's that's fine. We just wanted to we find can, I can translate. We're going to go to him from time to time. There and, we go. And we'll just see what he has to say. If he says it loud enough. <laughs> 
And now it's time to find out what is on the mind of one Matthew Archbold. Good morning, Matthew. Let's see if we silence, silence him too, right? Oh, that, that That's exactly what I would expect from you people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to ask you a question, then we're going to pull your mic down. All right, what, <laughs> what, what Matthew is thinking today, let me translate what he's going. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. How are you guys? Doing great on this Easter octave, the octave of Easter on this Thursday. Yeah, these are these are special times right now. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of grace out there to be had. So I, I hope people take advantage of it. Hey, I, I'm with you. And if you look hard enough, and I mean look really hard, like look really, really, look really, <laughs> really, look really, really, really hard, you can find all kinds of good things happening right, out yeah. there. <laughs> Well, here's some interesting news. You ready for some good news? Here? Absolutely. So a study was done. Normally, that's bad news, but a study was done. Yeah. And uh, it turns out that the more siblings someone has, the less likely they are to divorce. Wow. Oh, well, yeah. Huh. Imagine that. That is good news. Learning selfless, selflessness is, uh, is a good trait. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, I think what they really mean is... Men learning to deal with sisters mm. leads to less divorce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right about you know, that. That makes a lot of that sense sure too. Does. <laughs> but I've always said that I really thought that if I just had one or two kids, I would have been a terrible parent. And uh, I, I think having more kids makes me a less terrible uh, parent because there are things that they teach each other that I'm going to get credit for them learning. Ooh. That you know, you know, a kid with siblings just understands eventually that it's not always their turn, mm. you know? And, you know, if, if the other kid is bleeding, obviously that takes precedence over the, you know, the head of your Barbie being ripped off by your brother, you know, so they, mm. they just come to uh, understand a little more about patience. I assume the one who is bleeding is the one who ripped off the head of the Barbie and yeah. the, the daughter then went after him. Right, but there's, there's, there's no admitting it. That's yeah, the problem. Right. <laughs> Why are you bleeding? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> that is so true because siblings do learn from each other, and they learn that, uh, like my wife used to always say, you're upsetting the moral order of the house, which the kids didn't know what the heck that mm. was. <laughs> You know, yeah, but that's what it was, and they they tend to learn the culture and and uh, the lay of the land, so to speak, from the their peers rather than their parents. No, it's true. There, there are just things things you learn just through the friction of being imperfect with each other. Uh, that you, you learn patience and and humility and and grace because you you also learn that when you've overstepped the line, and you know, there's something about hearing people say i'm sorry and having to say you're sorry i mean let's be honest nothing prepares you for marriage better than learning to say you're sorry yeah, like, yeah. nothing at all but it, it, it's an interesting thing that you know dealing with others and that the fact that larger families do see less divorce is i i think very very interesting and i think you're just opening yourself up to more blessings in so many ways when when you have more children I love that idea, and having grown up in a in a family with uh, seven siblings, oh, six siblings, seven seven total children, I, I think my parents raised us all exactly the same, and my siblings are wonderful people, and then there's me. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> they didn't do anything differently. It was all the same, and that's the thing you learn in a big family. You parent the very best way that you can, and then a child ends up going the way they're going to go, and they make those decisions on their own. Of course, we're responsible to do the best that we can, but... You know, there there are the the wills of the individuals. Yeah, I used to think that older people went to daily mass uh, so often because they were afraid of dying. Yeah, uh, and they were getting old. But it's not. It it it's those children just like you who turned out different than the others. Yeah, and <laughs> they have no way of reaching you, so they're going to take it to a higher place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 